Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with Lakeland Public Television, serving North Central Minnesota. Today we are chatting with Danae Alamano, Executive Director of United Way of Bemidji Area. Danae has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Danae, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. United Way as a national organization with regional offices is such a fascinating organization. Talk about United Way here in Bemidji, here in North Central Minnesota. Sure. I think uh, the unique part about United Way is that it's its own, you know, every United Way is its own 501c3. So we get to be whatever our community needs us to be. And here in Bemidji, 99% uh, of funds raised here stay locally, right here in Bemidji. And our mission is to mobilize the caring power of the community through, uh, through giving. And um, I think that there's many different ways that we're able to do that. Um, we benefit both the business and the, or the giver, the business and the giver, and also the uh, agency in that for a business, they can give to one place and they're giving to everyone and are, are sure that where those funds are allocated is um, where they need to be in our community. And then for the agency, you hope that by providing funding, they're, they're getting to spend more time on their programming and less time on fundraising. And this is so much the strength of United Way, particularly in rural America, in that it is the strength of the community that is dedicated to strengthening the community itself. Mm -hmm. Talk about how you function as an intermediary to assure people who give that their money is going to be used wisely and to help the people who receive the funds provide their services in a way that, again, connect not only to the constituents, but also draw the giver into their constituency base. Every spring, our investment cabinet comes together, and uh, there's 16 people on the investment cabinet, and they spend six weeks allocating funds um, with about 30 hours of volunteer, um, of volunteer hours in that six-week time period. So um, to go through the process, uh, those 16 people are broken down into teams of eight, and each receive about four applications that those are their uh, responsibility to know in depth, to know the finances uh, in depth, to read through their application. They set up interviews to go on site. And these are the organizations that prospectively will receive funds. Yeah. Yes, a non and they have to be a 501c3 nonprofit here in, in the Bemidji area. Um, and we cover it within the school district. You have people who are functioning as investment um, advisors um, and decision makers. Mm -hmm. So they are coming in as people who are looking at a portfolio of activities and deciding which of those portfolio of activities will have the biggest bang for the buck, mm -hmm. which balances the kinds of investments that United Way makes mm -hmm. and which investments will, will uh, provide the greatest uh, impact mm -hmm. on the community. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about how that actual that process works. Does does everybody um, undertake their analysis in an idiosyncratic way, or do you have certain standards by which you measure, by, by which you you guide people in making those decisions? Well, the the process once they once the investment cabinet is given their assigned uh, agencies, they go out on an on-site interview to ask uh, to talk to both the director and a board member. Um, and see the facility themselves come back and spend five hours, uh, literally five hours, discussing how everyone's interview went. Um, and it's about, on an average, it's about 30 applications that we receive um, every year. And, and then after that, uh, we ask any new agencies or any agencies we still have questions for to come back for a full cabinet interview. Uh, after those interviews are done, each individual a uh, cabinet member sends me their recommendations. We put that all in a spreadsheet. They all come back and we have another five hour meeting deciding on the actual amounts that each uh, agency will receive based on how their financials are. Maybe they're, they're financially well off this year so they don't need as much funding as they needed the year before. And maybe they're in major need of, of um, even closing and really need our help to, to get their programming 
keep their programming going. Uh, and then that is then presented to our board of directors and they approve or, or have the cabinet come back together and uh, look at the financials one more time. One of our biggest programs is our Backpack Buddies program. Talk about that. And, yeah, we, uh, we, give, uh, we give food to children, uh, elementary age children, on uh, the weekends or holiday breaks who wouldn't otherwise have access to nutritious food. So a food pack is non-perishable. It fits inside their backpack as a backpack buddy, um, and it's uh, nutritionally balanced. Uh, Teachers are the ones identifying these students. Uh, we're, not, we're not linking ourselves to uh, any programs that the school has for lunch or, or breakfast, but more these are the kids that really, really need our support. So um, there are 200 kids in four elementary schools that are receiving a, a backpack buddy, two backpack buddies, one for Saturday, one for Sunday, every week. Those 200 kids are, are getting that. And then holidays, we, we pass them out um, a little more frequently. So they're getting, you know, the last week they might have a backpack buddy every week. We even let teachers decide, you know, if, if um, you know, a seven-year-old has a three-year-old sister at home, uh, we'll often give an extra food pack just to make sure that the whole thing, you know, the family has enough food for the weekend. It's so interesting because it's it's basically a gap in the type of programs. It's not a program that is uh, large enough to have its own organization. So you basically created a program that you administer yourself. Mm -hmm. Easy to do, um, logistically uh, fairly lean, mm -hmm. um, but it was, an, it was a way where you could take the resources that are contributed to, the, to um, United Way and on a, on a pass-through basis, mm -hmm. uh, basically utilizing um, the good graces of, of teachers um, and the intelligence that they collect mm -hmm. to ensure that, that appropriate support goes directly to children. Right, right. And then, um, and so every school year those students are identified for the school year. Um, it's not the same students all the time, even just based off of how their needs change and how their family structure changes. How was that uh, program con conceived and how long has it existed? I think it's been around for six or seven years. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has always had about 200 children, um, as far as I can tell, uh, that are in need in the program. Any other programs that you self-administer? Yeah, we have holiday gifts for kids, and we're giving between six and seven hundred children a, a gift for for um, the Christmas time of year. Uh, we have a distribution day where um, we all the gifts and all the funds we raised to uh, buy gifts are are out, and um, parents sign up beforehand to come and shop for their child or children uh, on that day, and. It's really just an amazing day because you get to, we, all, we have a volunteer walking with each, uh, each parent that's, or guardian that's coming through and um, we pull out our bigger gifts like throughout the day. So, you know, if you, you don't have to be there right at opening to get the best gifts. It's, it's throughout the day and um, I, I had a lot of different duties my first time doing this, uh, just this last year, but uh, there was one lady I was walking through and her, um, her husband had just left her. She is a stay-at-home mom. She, she, her pride was shot having to come to this. And we're walking through, and out comes a bike, and she got to, she got to take the bike home, and was just beside herself. And it was just such a neat experience to watch, you know, just watch the impact that that program is making on um, people here. Another program we we have is our Volunteer Bemidji website. So we offer to the to any uh, organization, it could be Rotary or one of our agencies, for example, um, can have a spot on our site where they can ask volunteers to, you know, volunteers come and look at the site every day and they can sign up for different uh, events, one day events that, uh, that need volunteers for on that day. So that site's called volunteerbemidji.org and it has um, really served a need in our community. Uh, another program is our Someone Special program where our, our different nonprofit agencies are welcome to uh, nominate volunteers that they have in the community that they want to recognize. And um, they're on, uh, in the newspaper, on the radio, and then receive a really nice plaque from Ken K. Thompson here in town just to, to say thank you for all their great work.
is United Way and the way United Way looks at these investments, is this also a matter of economic development in the area where you're priming the pump, you're, you're helping people who need help, and then that actually enables the growth of, of the area? That's definitely the hope. I think, um, you know, with our focus and listening to our cabinet talk about different agencies, and it always came back to, but we have to meet those basic needs for people to thrive and be able to hold a job or uh, learn when they're in school or whatever it might be. We have to. If be you able can to eat, you can needs. learn, mm -hmm. right? If mm -hmm. you if you are not in pain because you do receive health care, mm -hmm. you can contribute. If you're not on drugs, you can work. Exactly. Exactly. And if you are educated, you can get a job and you can start to create and, and see how you can help others as you progress through your life. Right, right. And so many agencies are doing so many amazing things in our community. It's such a driving force for me to want to grow and want to help them and, and want them to be able to continue to do their programming, like I said before, rather than having to focus so much on the fundraising. I would, I would love to close that gap and make sure that they're getting to actually make that impact for other people. Dene Alamano, thank you so much for sharing the experience of United Way of Bemidji area. And thank you so much for your insights.